Ever since I saw Herbert Dice at Davos in 2020, he got my attention when he was outspoken about his admiration for Elon Musk and vocal about electric cars as the future. This is total speculation, but I do believe Dice asked Elon for his help or some sort of mutual partnership, but Tesla can't make enough to supply their own demand, and so at this stage it's really not something Tesla would entertain. After that, Dice changed his tune from respecting Musk to poor showmanship in his first ever tweet targeted right at Elon and Tesla. And it would seem that any investors who are more bearish on Tesla would love to tell you how Volkswagen is dominating Europe in EV sales and saying a lot more EVs than Tesla. So let's break this down and get to the bottom of it and find out just how successful Volkswagen are when you remove all the marketing hyperbole. Then let's take a look at what plans Volkswagen have to allegedly beat Tesla at their own game. Well, it's working. Most people simply believe Volkswagen and they'll come back at any Tesla fanboy stating the facts of how much Volkswagen are dominating in Europe. Now we know the kind of games Volkswagen like to play with Dieselgate. Well, it appears they're at it again with EV Salesgate. They appear to be fudging the numbers on their electric cars every way possible. Supposedly 35% of Volkswagen battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicle registrations were actually their own dealerships. In addition to that, of the 700 or so ID3 sold in Switzerland, over half of them are for sale again. Anyway, maybe Volkswagen just had a rough start and just need to save face for a little longer. It's still early in the game, so let's have a look at some of the other things they're up to. Well, seriously, we need to give them credit where credit is due. Audi actually can handle 270 kilowatts of charging, which is pretty amazing. But hands down, this will definitely recharge the car faster than any Tesla out there. It can actually take twice as long for a Tesla to charge to 400 miles over the Audi at just 200 miles of range. And Thomas Olbrich said, we need significantly more charging points in Germany and Europe. So not just Europe, but Germany too. And he's probably right. Anyway, it sounds like it was all a bit too much for him as he'd had to leave Volkswagen soon after that. Volkswagen actually own Electrify America that have more than 2,200 charging units in the US. Volkswagen are also in a joint venture with Ionity, which have about 1,672 chargers in Europe. So Volkswagen more or less control around 4,000 chargers in the US and Europe. To give some comparison, there are over 20,000 Tesla superchargers globally. The Volkswagen brand has a comprehensive commitment to charging. Some 4,000 charging points are to be installed at the brand sites by 2025, although Tesla now have a new factory making 10,000 chargers a year. But Volkswagen are one step ahead there, because every Volkswagen dealer in Germany will provide at least one AC charger with 11 kilowatts of power and a DC charger with 22 kilowatts of power. So that's pretty handy in a pinch. Yes, I honestly really are aiming for the fastest charging speeds with high speed capacity of up to 350 kilowatts. This compares to only 250 kilowatts for Tesla. But the Tesla can charge 200 miles in 15 minutes, which isn't really that big a deal while you're sitting there watching Netflix. You see, Tesla need to balance everything for their robo-taxi network, as when you look at that business model, the whole EV industry is just a distraction, and I believe the 250 kilowatts is an optimal rate that Tesla have chosen to maintain the battery life in order for them to achieve their milestone of above 1 million miles per vehicle. So yes, perhaps you may save some time charging if you have a car that can handle such a powerful charge and find a powerful enough charger, like the latest Audi e-tron GT can accept up to 270 kilowatts for example. Now that's 8% faster than a Tesla, which might work out at a whole minute and 20 seconds quicker charging. Although you might also have to factor in the extra time it might take you to find a charger, as there are not so many of them as Tesla superchargers. In macroeconomics, it's important to consider the whole picture. And Volkswagen are on top of autonomy now too, having teamed up with Microsoft, which is a brand synonymous with self-driving, but more importantly known for their reliable software that would never crash that you would feel comfortable depending your life on. And Volkswagen have started Mission T to catch up to Tesla. They're going to tailor Volkswagen's strategy to keep up with these new competitors and had a workshop revolved around how to catch up with Tesla. The opening question was, what do we have to achieve in the next six months to catch up with Tesla in terms of technology by 2024? And success, they managed to work out the answers, which are, to grow software capabilities at an even faster rate and pull software and hardware resources at Audi under the leadership of Marcus Deussmann and the Artemis project, a unit outside the existing corporate structures. Which is great because Marcus is actually the chairman of the board of management of Audi, 
so a very high up position, which means he probably has the power to hire someone who might actually know something about EVs and batteries. But they still need the battery supply, and they aren't being complacent there either. Volkswagen say they will spend around 73 billion euros on electrification, hybrid powertrains, and digital technology over the next five years. Now that is a lot of money, and bound to keep stockholders happy for a while. Although I'm not entirely sure where they get the money from. And they go on to say approximately 35 billion euros will be spent on battery electric vehicles. Having set the course for a battery electric future in the Volkswagen Group early on, we are now a global leader with our electric platforms and a broad range of electric vehicles, says Herbert Dice, Chief Executive Officer. I would love to know what they are leading in globally in regards to EVs. I did as much research as I could, but sorry everyone, I couldn't work it out. If anyone does know, perhaps you could tell us in the comments below. And in the coming years, it will be crucial to also reach a leading position in car software in order to meet people's needs for individual, sustainable and fully connected mobility in the future. To that end, we have doubled our digitalization spend. Investments in digitalization will double to 27 billion euros by mid-decade, reflecting the group's strong focus on building up software capabilities. Now, this is an insane amount to be spending. I don't even understand what they mean by building up software capabilities. Capable of what? Over there updates? Tesla don't make electric cars, they make digital cars, so perhaps that's what they mean. But why does that cost so much in R&D? Over the next 10 years, the group intends to launch approximately 70 all-electric models by 2030. Around 20 of these are already in production, with 50 more to follow. In addition, around 60 hybrids are planned by the end of the decade, slightly over half of which are being manufactured. So 70 all-electric models, and apparently 20 are already in production? I really don't understand. As far as I can tell, it's only the Porsche Taycan, Volkswagen ID3, ID4, e-Golf, the Audi e-tron GT, the Audi e-tron that Volkswagen currently have in production. Am I missing some? I honestly don't understand why they're saying this. And I can't believe they haven't announced an electric Porsche 911. There is no electric sports car competition. Electric powered vehicles are great for performance and handling. And the 911 is Porsche's iconic model. It can even get away with a high price tag. Unfortunately for Volkswagen, market share isn't the percentage of models you offer, it's what percentage of sales you have. Now, Volkswagen do get credit here, as they have clearly worked out that battery sales do play a special role in EVs. And they've identified that they will need 150 gigawatts of battery capacity by 2025. Wow, that's a lot of batteries, and it's going to be a great target to catching up to Tesla in 2024, when Tesla are aiming to be up to 100 gigawatts of battery production next year, just in-house not to mention their suppliers. So Mission T is certainly making sense now, but Volkswagen aren't taking any risks from suppliers. No, they really aren't messing around here and have a joint venture with Norfolk. With battery cell production at the plant is scheduled to commence in early 2024 with an initial production capacity of 16 gigawatt hours. And they're investing 450 million euros into this. Yes, that's right. In three years time, they will be producing enough batteries to create 16 gigawatt hours. If each car is using a 50 kilowatt hour battery, then that is enough batteries for production of about 320,000 cars a year. Just to compare, Tesla plan on 100 gigawatt hours next year, which at 50 kilowatt hours would give an average of 2 million cars next year. But this still leaves Volkswagen short about 134 gigawatt hours of their alleged demand. And as far as I can tell, they don't appear to have a plan on how to achieve that. And this is just their demand in Europe. Volkswagen's plan to become the leaders in EV is to work out how to catch up to Tesla. How can you beat someone playing catch up? One other problem with trying to catch up to a technologically innovative company, particularly one that can adapt so fast, is that they can continually change the game on you with continual breakthroughs, as we've seen with the likes of cell to vehicle integration and the Gigapress. Anyway, Volkswagen are clearly taking this serious and I look forward to seeing what transformation these exorbitant investments make to the company over the coming years Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.